Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going to be talking about how to become a Salesforce consultant and how to supercharge your career as a Salesforce consultant. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I want to talk about what is a Salesforce consultant. So let's actually break this down. What is a consultant? Because a lot of people don't really know what a consultant is or what a consultant does and it's really actually pretty confusing. So Kind of how I would describe it is that a consultant is someone who has a brain for hire. So someone that will do all of the thinking, who will answer questions for your business um, in a specific area. So um, a lot of consulting firms will have consultants who specialize in different areas. It could be in market research, it could be in marketing, it could be in software. So essentially what a Salesforce consultant is, is someone who is a Salesforce brain for hire who will perform Salesforce tasks for your company. So meaning if someone is a Salesforce, needs a Salesforce admin, there will be a Salesforce consultant who's also an admin who will then perform those admin tasks for you. Typically this is going to be on a project basis and will may or may not include any ongoing services going forward, but typically that would be done by the company that hired the Salesforce admin. Hopefully that explanation made sense. Typically working as a Salesforce consultant is going to be a very fast paced job. It is going to be on a billable hours type of system where you are working on a specific project for the company that you are not working for, but you are hired out to. And so you'll be working on an hourly basis, even though you might be salaried from that company. So let's say you are working at Accenture, which is a large consulting firm, but then you're hired out to, let's say, Google as a consultant to work on a specific project. Uh, you would, Accenture would bill Google for your hours and then Accenture would pay you a salary. So let's talk a little bit about why a company would want to hire a consultant. One, it's typically going to be cheaper to hire um, a consultant for a specific project rather than to hire someone on full time just to then possibly lay them off once the project is done. It also helps in that kind of continuity basis where you know you're going to be on that project until it's done. Typically it's going to be for a project like I've mentioned and so you may be a specialty type of person within Salesforce. So you might be um, a CPQ developer and so you might just be needed for um, a CPQ implementation um, to develop on whatever company you're hired out for, for that specific project to implement CPQ as a developer. And when that project's done, you're going to be put on another project that requires a CPQ developer or someone with your skills. So I do want to mention here that there is a difference in consulting. So there's going to be, I like to call it big firm consulting or medium firm consulting. And then there's also going to be freelance consulting, which is completely different but they kind of cross over because they're both consulting. So freelance consulting is going to be just you or maybe one other person. And you are typically going to be working with smaller companies to set up their Salesforce system or maybe to then do ongoing support for their system when they have issues. Typically that company when you're freelancing doesn't need a full-time person on Salesforce or maybe they just need someone small to help with a specific part of Salesforce. This could be one-off or ongoing, so maybe they need someone to set up their reports or they need someone to uh, set up their service cloud, and so you're going to be that person who is setting that up. When you are a freelance consultant, you're going to be in charge of bringing in your own business, so you're going to be looking for people to work for, for smaller companies to work for, and you're going to be bringing in your own clientele. Typically this is going to be part-time for a lot of different companies, but you can build this up if you want to to a full-time job. Um, different ways that you can find clientele is on Upwork, is on LinkedIn. You could create helpful content like this. I found clientele through YouTube that I worked for. So that's going to be freelance consulting. Now let's talk about firm consulting. So the main difference between this is that you're going to be working for a larger firm. Like I mentioned, you're going to work for possibly Accenture, which is a larger one. Deloitte, Slalom, Simplis are all examples of different firms that you could work for, different consulting firms. There are also smaller boutique firms that are in each city or remote firms that you could work for. There's typically an endless amount of consulting firms for Salesforce. So I guess one of the bigger differences is typically you're not going to be building your own clientele. The company will be doing that for you and then you're going to be staffed on projects. And these projects are not going to be ongoing unless you have a special designation called managed services, which is going to be after the project's done, any support that's ongoing that the client may or may not opt into. So oftentimes these will be an implementation of some type of new software, integration, setting up Salesforce as a whole for the beginning, or it could be for cleaning up 
data. So implementations of Service Cloud, Sales Cloud, Experience Cloud, uh, CPQ. It could be integrating systems like HubSpot and Salesforce, or you could be integrating AWS with Salesforce, or you could be cleaning up your data and trying to make the system run smoothly again. So these are all example projects of things that would be larger. And typically it is going to be a larger project. It's going to be something where you're going to need multiple people on. So you'll be working on a team for that project. A lot of the times you'll be using business analysts, developers, architects, admins, um, maybe specialty consultants that are going to be in field service, CPQ, experience cloud, whatever the project is. So that's going to be in a larger firm. Whereas when you're in a freelance consulting capacity, it's just going to be you typically. And maybe you'll bring on a subcontractor that is a developer in certain use cases that you might need. So now that we have that designation out of the way, let's kind of go into general consulting and what is general consulting. So one of the reasons why it is so hard to narrow down what uh, a Salesforce consultant is, is because it can be a lot of different things and it can be multiple things. So there are a lot of different levels of consultants. You have Salesforce admins, you have Salesforce business analyst consultants, you have Salesforce architect consultants, um, all of these different jobs within Salesforce and different levels of people within Salesforce. And then going beyond that, you can have certain specialties within Salesforce and you could have more than one. So you could be um, a CPQ developer, you could be a business analyst that also really knows field service, you could be an admin that only does sales cloud. So that's why it's kind of hard to narrow down what a Salesforce consultant is, is because it really narrows down things a lot. Entry level consulting jobs can be really difficult to find both in freelancing and in big firm consulting um, because there are so many entry level people and so many people want to be a consultant. Typically when you are looking for a consultant job, it's best to have some type of specialty when you are going into that job. So then you can be staffed on more projects and then you're more valuable to that consultancy or to the client when you are consulting for them. If you are just kind of a vanilla admin, then it can be more difficult to find a consulting job because um, someone who's specialized in a specific area of Salesforce or who has transferable skills can also be staffed on those vanilla admin jobs. So let's talk about ways to specialize. So getting certifications is one of the top ways to be able to specialize within Salesforce. So like I've talked before, try working on different clouds like sales cloud, service cloud, field service, Tableau, which is kind of Salesforce adjacent, but also Salesforce because Salesforce owns Tableau, CPQ, Experiences, Omni Studio, really anything that isn't just an admin, a developer, or an architect on the certification page on Trailhead is going to be something to specialize in. One thing that is really valuable is when you are consulting or you're looking to go into consulting is to be at least two things. So what do I mean by that? So you're going to be an admin plus, a developer plus, a business analyst plus, an architect plus. So if you are an admin, you could get field service and be an admin who admin plus field service. You could be a developer who is a developer plus CPQ, which PS, CPQ developers make a lot of money. Um, that's just a little PSA. You could be an admin plus experiences. You could be an architect plus Tableau. The more areas that you can specialize in, so if you have like admin plus like five things, um, the more likely you are to be staffed on projects, so the more hireable you'll be. And typically people hire consultants consultancies, freelancers to specialize in one thing that they could not do on their own. So that will help you greatly when you're looking for a Salesforce consultant job. So you can also specialize beyond Salesforce. Salesforce is not the only thing that people will be hiring Salesforce consultants for because there's a lot of other areas that Salesforce touches, other integrations, other things that they're wanting to move from or to. And so Salesforce knowledge can be transferable. Let's talk about some certifications beyond Salesforce. Things like project management, like having your PMP certification, which is really difficult to get, or your CSM, which is more valuable and a little bit easier to get. Those can both really help. And also CSM, you can get in one weekend. So if you have a free weekend or holiday weekend, I would look to get a certification in that if possible. Other things are gonna be Tableau, like we mentioned, which is kind of Salesforce, kind of not. AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Uh, HubSpot, which is going to be another CRM, which would be really helpful. Also, any Google Cloud certifications could be really helpful. Why would you want to get these certifications? Again, Salesforce touches all these different things, so you'll be more hireable if you have other skills than just being a vanilla entry-level admin. 
So if you are looking to specialize in these certain areas, certifications are going to be king for a couple different reasons. One, it is a way to easily filter down if you're going to be hired or not by the person who's going to be hiring you or using you for a particular skill. So if you are in freelance consulting and the company needs someone who can migrate their Salesforce from HubSpot, they're going to be searching for someone who has both Salesforce and HubSpot experience. If you were looking for a larger firm consulting position, oftentimes they are going to be hiring for what their clients are asking for. So it's going to go back to, they're going to be hiring someone who has both Salesforce and HubSpot experience. Just an example. Another reason why you're gonna to wanna to get certifications other than for that simple reason of that's what they're gonna be searching for and that's what they're going to be needing is that Salesforce will often rank larger firm consulting consultancies or even medium term consultancies by their certifications and the number of certifications that they have. So oftentimes there's a ranking on Salesforce of how many projects they're doing, how many certifications the company has as a whole. And so um, the more certifications, the more specialty certifications, it's going to be easier to hire you for a consultancy job or as a freelance consultant. So if you're looking for a Salesforce consultant job and you're looking for certifications, just get all of them. Um, that's kind of simple, but um, the more certifications that you have, the more likely that you'll be hired on as a consultant, freelance, or consultancy. So I recommend a lot of certifications. Certifications, this could include just the Salesforce certifications, specialty Salesforce certifications, vanilla Salesforce certifications. Um, the more you have, the better. Um, you could also do Tableau, which is again, kind of yes, kind of no. Capato, which is really helpful and goes along really well with Salesforce if you are a consultant, if you're not a consultant, or if you're just looking for a Salesforce job in general. HubSpot and AWS, Google Cloud certifications are all super useful. So now once you have these certifications, and you're able to um, apply to Salesforce consultant jobs, then you'll want to get really good at interviewing for, for consultancy positions, which is going to be a lot about answering questions about your specialty experience, your project experience, and other types of experiences. You may be asked to complete a test project before you are hired on, because at least big firm consultancies are looking for someone who already has the experience who can jump in feet first and get going pretty quickly on the project. But that is kind of how you um, work towards becoming a Salesforce consultant. It's a lot of certifications, a lot of showing your knowledge. I would recommend using social media to work towards getting a consultancy job if that's something that you would like. So sharing your knowledge on LinkedIn is going to be the main place I recommend that you show your knowledge because it's the main place where you're going to get hired from. Personally, I've only gotten Salesforce jobs from LinkedIn, and so I think it's a great place. Also, you're gonna to wanna to share possibly on Twitter. Those can easily be the same posts. You could share on YouTube, like I am sharing here on different projects you are completing. So let's say you want to work on Experience Cloud, and that's the thing that you're really passionate about. I really recommend that you create videos on Experience Cloud and post them here on YouTube, as well as on blogs. Um, Experience Cloud, is actually one of the things that YouTube lacks the most of, as well as CPQ on YouTube. There aren't a lot of videos on those things. So if you can share your knowledge on this platform, on those specific specialties, then one, you're likely going to be able to help a lot of people and possibly be able to network into a consultant job. Here's a hot take recommendation about how to supercharge your career with a Salesforce consultant job. Personally, I think that this is a way to be able to level up in Salesforce fairly quickly and to gain a lot of Salesforce knowledge. I really would recommend this if you have a lot of time to focus on your career. So if you are single or if you're just married and you don't have any children and you want to gain a lot of knowledge on the Salesforce platform, get a lot of certifications very quickly through experience. This is how I would do it if I was somewhat new to Salesforce. I didn't really have a lot going on in my personal life and I just really wanted to focus on my career and getting a lot of experience really quickly. Starting from zero, this is what I would do. So once I have an admin job, I would then work, find an admin job in-house and then work towards getting to that first thing that I talked about earlier in the video where you're going to be either an admin and that's what you're gonna do, or a developer or an architect or a business analyst, whatever, I guess, job grouping you want to have within Salesforce, I would work towards getting to that. Once I was there, I would look towards getting a specialty certification that was in high demand. So CPQ, which is really difficult, experiences, which is going to be a little bit easier, field service, Omni Studio, um, service cloud, sales cloud, or kind of specialty certifications, but a lot of people have those. So I'd look towards 
something a little bit more niche. Um, and while I was getting those, I would share my knowledge, share what I was passionate about, share things that would be useful to other people on YouTube, blogs, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the platforms. So once I was there, I had one or two specialty certifications. Maybe that was within Salesforce or maybe that was um, Salesforce adjacent. Then I would start looking for a consultancy job. So once I had that consultancy job, which consultant jobs are like a fire hose because there are a lot of moving pieces. You're on a quick timeline. You are working on delivering a project that is really well done, that is going to last for a few years for the client. Then I would work towards getting the certifications that matched the projects that I was on or that had some crossover between the projects that I was staffed on. If I was working as a developer on some type of project that crossed over between um, Tableau and Salesforce, then I would work towards getting those Tableau certifications um, while I was working on that project because then I could use that knowledge that I had gained while I was working on that project to help me get those certifications. Personally, I find when I have hands-on experience with a particular piece of Salesforce or a particular piece of implementation, then it's easier to understand the questions and think back to my experience and answer those questions correctly. So I would continue to get as many certifications as I could while I was staffed on that project. Then all of those experiences would be fresh in my mind and then I'd be able to level that up fairly quickly. So the same goes for other pieces of software like if you're working with Google Cloud as a developer or if you're working as an admin or an architect, whatever uh, capacity you're working in, I would use whatever project I was in to then guide my next certification so then I could gain as much knowledge as possible. And this is why it works super well if you are really trying to focus on your career and you don't have a lot of personal commitments. So once you have started and gotten your feet wet, just try and get as many certifications as possible that are useful, that your experience can lead to. And as long as you can feasibly do this without harming your mental health or without harming your physical health or your personal life. And then try and think towards some type of end goal position that you want to have. Maybe you want to be an architect for a larger firm, or maybe you want to be a developer for a specific company. Those certifications are gonna help you land that job that you eventually want in the future when you want your life to kind of quiet down a little bit. And when you are finally able to move on and when you are ready to move on, you will be a highly certified, a highly trained, and a highly disciplined Salesforce professional and highly hireable <laughs> Salesforce professional because you have so many certifications and knowledge of Salesforce that you are able to apply to any position that you would really want within Salesforce as long as you have the qualifications for it and kind of settle your life down, be highly knowledgeable. And the reason why this works so well, and I've seen a lot of Salesforce professionals do this, and the reason why this works so well is because consulting is a fire hose. You work a lot of hours, you work a lot of projects, you work a lot of different areas of Salesforce, and so you're able to gain a lot of experience in a short amount of time that will help you gain certifications. If I was starting over from zero and I didn't have children yet, that's what I would personally do. That is kind of how you become a Salesforce consultant, how you use a Salesforce consultant job to help you level up within Salesforce and to become a highly knowledgeable Salesforce professional. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give a like, subscribe. Um, you can check out the courses down below in the description. Leave any comments for me that any questions that you have. I will try and get back to them as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.